when an artist, an Indian artist, who's as renowned as Paresh Maithi, decides to put up a retrospective of his work in uh, different cities of India, takes them to five different cities and uh, puts a grand show, even in a city like Mumbai, and then has a book released about uh, the retrospective as well, all of which is called Infinite Light. It compels people like me to come take notice and, of course, enjoy the beautiful art that he's created over the last 40 years, Parish. Last 40 years. It's so good to have you with us on the show, Parish. Very warm welcome. Thank you very much and I'm very glad and very happy to be with uh, E.T. now, uh, with you, Vikram, yes. to speak, open my heart <laughs> about this exhibition. Parish, do tell me, because, you know, the pandemic has been a difficult time for just about everyone. But then, art thrives in adversity. And over the last two years, that the pandemic really hit us and it hit us so bad. Tell me what Indian art has been doing, what you've been doing that is really compelling and different from anything that you would have done in the past. See, if you notice, during all kinds of crises, during First World War, during Second World War, it was huge crisis in the world, but art was never stopped. True. Same way, you know, during this last, you know, two years, during the, not the India, is global pandemic, it was worst situation probably till now we have seen. Yes. In our lifetime. But it was amazing, I think, for art and artist to really concentrate and do and create more and more art. Was it different? Uh, the kind of art that emerged in this time? I think there were a lot of the changes. The kind of Indian art There are a lot of changes and there are a lot of transformation happened with many artists. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I can tell you with me. Right. Because it was very, very quiet without going to any art exhibition or without going to any socialization. Right. It was just art. You and art, your art. 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 <laughs> where that any artist could concentrate. Correct. Absolutely from the bottom of heart right. they were creating. Artists, they do create from their heart, from their mind and soul. Yeah. But I think it was much more one side. You see what is happening, what is going, what is going on, where we are going. Yeah. But art was taking on its own place in this. When did you create this bowl? You know, we come from a business channel. We love bulls. Yeah, it's very iconic for us when it comes to the stock market. And then when we see something as large as this, we get very attracted to it. This but is 8,500 temple bells. Yes. And constructed 26 feet long, 11 feet height, and uh, 9 feet width. It symbolizes the stability, the strength, and the force. Right. The way we are progressing in today's time. So that's. And bell, it is the symbol of positive, mm -hmm. positiveness. Yes. It takes away the negative energy, it brings the positive energy. So, it is... Something we can all use at this time, Puresh. Positive energy is what we need, right? Everybody, everybody anywhere everybody, in the world can. Yeah. But I know, Puresh, that you've always believed in scale, in size. There is so much that you've done, which is, of course, in different uh, mediums as well. You haven't restricted yourself ever. But scale is something that is very central to you, even when we come into a space like this. Is this something that you find the corporate world more interested in? Because a lot of your clientele comes from the corporate world of India, yeah? Uh, corporate world from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, art or creation should not have any barrier. Right. With scale or small or big or anything. But yes, when the scale comes, there are challenges. There are not only challenges to create the piece of art, also challenges, there are a lot of challenges to, you know, uh, logistic problem it comes to, let's say there are two, this big gigantic or the bull or what you talk. Yes. It is, it came in one forty feet container. Right. So this is, you know, but artists should not even, uh, we, I never think, I never thought to anything I just create for art, art for art's sake. Right. I never thought of anything first. But is I that create. mentality changing a little bit now? Because, is, uh, you know, Indian art is just about coming into its own. When you uh, consider the draw of the modernists, and then you compare what the contemporaries are doing, there is a marked shift, right? And in terms of what the audiences all over the world, in terms of art consumers all over the world, what they're looking for, that too has gone through a change. It is, the time is changing. Time is changing very rapidly. 
you see how modernization, how things have changed. You can see that everybody is dependent on phone. Right. That has become like office. True. So with that change, that everything is changing. And that is the reality. Right. And otherwise, what is reality? There is nothing reality in this world. So it is very important that also art should change with the time, in time. And that's why uh, you see the, the language of art is also changing. How is it changing, you think? How is the language changing? It's changing, you will see a lot of modernity, a lot of contemporary, a lot of images, a lot of new things, new images are imposing because art is socio-economic, you know, impression. So what is happening with the economic situation, with the social situation, that has to reflect in art. Right, and is technology changing a lot of it as well? Do you it, find uh, yes. technology having its yes. impression in art? Because it, I it see does. how art is getting fueled by technology. It is. But I want to understand how you find it reflecting in art as well. It is, it is reflecting in a big way. You see today this big uh, sculpture, yes. Genesis. Mm -hmm. You see the size of this scale. So if I don't, did not have the technology today, the modern technology to carry this, to construct this, it would have been completely impossible for me to, you know, do this. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is there also technology like, you know, how earlier to compile a book, as you said in the beginning, the infinite light book. Yeah. To compile a book become much easier because of the new technology. Like the, the file we have created in, let's say, somewhere else, it can immediately go through, you know, V-transfer to another place. You can compose there sitting in another site. So yeah. this is because of the technology. True. So technology also has come in a big way into what it has to come. Sure. It has to come and uh, art, art plays on its own in another site, but technology also supports to create. You know, Paresh, talking about technology, I'm thinking about non-fungible tokens. NFT art has become a big buzzword. The younger lot are looking to put in money into art, but they want it in a digitalized form, which is essentially what is happening with NFT art. Have you indulged in it? Have you gone into NFT art? Have you created a lot in uh, that space? I have not created uh, any art specifically for NFT, but there were two, three of my you know, art was in NFT, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, non-fungible token. See, with the modernization in time, how, you know, people are changing, because you will see many people today, many the younger generation, they may not have time or they are not aware of the physical art and all this. Right. They are all the time in, on the screen in a different world. True. So this is one big advantage, the people, they are not into the physical art, the tangible art. They, they explore into that world. Mm -hmm. So there are completely a different kind of, or a different set of audience who is going to... And you see really, that audience growing? You know, it, they are big, growing in a very big way. Very big way because you see that almost during the whole day they are into just one, you know, laptop, computer or desktop yes. or, you know, phone. Yeah. And they want to immediately see, you know, a image, an image or a digitalized image. Uh, in their screen. True. And so, like, you know, earlier it was all film camera. Yeah. But some years back, the digital camera has come up. True. And so it has taken a parallel. And both have their own charm. Own charm. And, and you think both will coexist? It will coexist yeah. because it, it cannot, see, uh, it has to coexist in time with time and with the changing time. Sure. Because we never thought that with the phone that you will transfer the money, you are yeah. paying everything, you are calling a car, you so are why not paying art? everything. <laughs> so the art is also changing in, with that yes. kind of technology. In sure. Time. So you see that happening much more in the near future? Do you see is, NFT is, is really uh, gathering momentum? When I speak about NFT art, I'm talking essentially about Indian art and finding that route of growth through NFT. I think it will take also a greater place in near future right. with that NFT. Uh, but side by side, that proper, tangible art, what people can enjoy every day on their wall or on their... Yeah, you can't have NFT art on your walls, on your, on right? Your it's wall. a digitalized token and it just yeah. lies in that universe. You it's not that. something that you can have on your walls. You, uh, something like this as well. Yes. Uh, looking at the size of this, and I know that you've created so many pieces of art that go across 
you know, an international airport, yes. Indira Gandhi International Airport at Delhi. That's what you're greeted with. Paresh Mehti comes immediately to mind when I'm thinking of that mural. Uh, yes. And you've created the... 850 feet. 850 feet. One of the longest in the world. That's right. So yes. there is something about scale that really works in your understanding, in your scope of things. Yeah. Does it work for the audience as well? What art market is looking for in things like the, this? The scale, when you are into scale, as I said that, scale, you know, the art should not have any kind of or creativity. No, but so there is commissioned art as well, no? Perry? Yeah, so what happens when you are going to really make into scale? Remember, like this 850 feet painting, only it can be with public art. Correct. So all the scale, the big format size art, either a painting, either a sculpture or, you know, any, anything, it is for public. It but is aren't for uh, all corporates also which have large yes. spaces, commercial yes. spaces? Yes. And yes. I see a lot of it uh, yeah, being also, used to. Also corporate, remember, that is also for public. Right. You see, right. see there, there is this uh, corporate park in Bangalore mm -hmm. with many world-class offices are there. And they have this beautiful sculpture park. Imagine thousands of people are interacting with those sculptures. Sure. So art is for all, for everybody. It is. It is. And if you see, when Ajanta, Ilola, Kunarak, it was all created thousands of years back. Correct. For everybody. So all the, when you are talking about scale, you will see a big piece of art, as you said, maybe uh, in the airport or in a big shopping mall or in a big corporate office lobby or hotel lobby. Yeah, but Paresh, I'm trying to figure out what spurs growth in the Indian art market because I was looking at one report which says that in the first half of the year, 2000, FY23, in the first six months alone, we've seen art turnover being 76 million US dollars. And this by far breaks the kind of records that we've had in the past. I'm just wondering why Indian art is growing at the pace at which it's growing and how much more it can grow. It has enough scope to grow much more. Uh, if you see, compare with the West, Indian art was much more, you know, Indian art, as you see, the art and culture is very, very rich, right. very old and very historical. Mm -hmm. But that scope was not there because of this economic situation, whatever the situation is. Art had to grow and this is the time, you know, everything has its own time. I think this is the time has come, which is growing rapidly and it should grow. But what is spurring it? Why do you think it's growing right now? Because in comparison, see, now the, there is no uh, such that this is, we are in a global village. If you see the rest, India is also with the same, you know, uh, speed with everybody, right? like Europe, with America, with any other place in the world. So that's why also Indian art is growing rapidly. And what will it take to make it grow even faster and further? Uh, As we go into this new year, etc., what do you expect Indian art to do? What do you expect Indian artists to do that will make the market grow that much larger? Because we have these events, we have an India art fair, we have uh, the Kochi event every two years. I mean, is this enough or do we need much more of this? We need much more uh, projection, much more exposure. Mm -hmm. We need some very important museum in each and every city. When we go to New York, when you go to Paris, you yes. see how many museums. People, they go, what they see? They see Musée d'Orsay or Louvre or MoMA yes. in Manhattan or True. Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. And we need such world-class you know, big museum because India is full of artists, right. full of art. Yes. Each corner has an artist, each para has an artist, everywhere. <laughs> and it's very colorful, very dynamic. And well, you've grown up in Bengal. As I understand right. it, tribal art is something that you found great inspiration in. Uh, we have so much of that folk art, but have we been able to capitalize that? And do you see that growing as well? Because it's going to be an important space for us to dive into. When we're talking about taking India to the world, art could be that. See, our folk art or traditional art or tribal art is much more powerful powerful art than any contemporary art in the world. And my art in painting, in sculpture, or in ceramics, or watercolor, yeah. has got super influence from that. And they are very powerful and very unique. 
you let go to Orissa, go to Chhattisgarh, you go to Bihar, you go to any place. Yes. You know, you go to, you know, like Maharashtra, you go, every place has their unique, very strong, you know, this folk art, you know, or tribal art. Yes. And they are very strong, very powerful. So would you say the story of growth of the Indian art market also lies in artists dipping into the Indian uh, history? Yes. Looking into our past to be yes. able to create Yes. New meaning and bringing new experiences. Yes, that's what India is. Is there, you know, everything is merging with our strong strength tradition, and where is you know the new, you know, modernity technology which is coming and world has opened now. Yes, big way. So the opportunities are growing. Opportunities are not growing, growing very fast, <laughs> very fast. And you're tapping into them after 50 uh, years of uh, working. Well, I, I don't know I'm tapping or not, but at least I'm trying to do, cre create the art first because my vision is to create a you know, very beautiful piece of art and give the joy and happiness to the audience. Yes. Now, what force and how it is going, that is not my... You, know, you, you can't control that. I, I can't control But that. there are forces that are going to make it happen and we hope to see much more of Paresh Mehti, not just as retrospectives, but fresher, newer art that comes out of someone who's as experienced as you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you us. very much. It Thank was you. really a great pleasure talking to you, Vikram. Thank you. And hope Indian art will grow much more faster, rapidly, and taking its own place and global place and global platform near future soon in the world. That's the hope. Thank you. Thank you very much.